Welcome to The Bold Book of the Day with Dr. Denise Nicholson, a show that is a central hub and safe space for authors to share their stories. The Bold Book with Dr. Denise begins now. Hello, everyone. Guess who I have here today? Well, keep on guessing because today is the bold book of the day. And my name is Dr. Denise Nicholson. I'm the author of Sila When Mommy Left for Foreign and the creator of the Bold Book of the Day podcast. Today's episode is with one of my best friends, Mrs. NAOB. She's an author, she's a teacher, she's a TEDx speaker. She's an amazing woman and she is the author of Your Life is Calling, How to Do, How to Do You and Live Without Regrets. This is a number one best-selling book and please welcome Miss NAOB. Yay! Hello, hello Denise. Hello everyone. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about the conversation that we are about to have. Thank you. Tell the people about you. Who is NAOB and why did you write this book? Who is NAOB and why did I write this book? Uh, those are great questions. So Denise, I am, first of all, let me start by saying I'm absolutely blown away to be here with you today. I am an international TEDx speaker, as you said. I am the author of the best-selling book, Your Life is Falling. And I have had the privilege of having, uh, of sharing my, my stage, having two of the greatest motivational speakers in the world keynote at my events, Les Brown and Lisa Nichols. And so that's what people may know about me. But what a lot of people may not know about me is that prior to this, I had a corporate career of almost three decades. And as I built the corporate dream, as I climbed the corporate ladder, due to a lack of self-awareness, a lack of self-assessment, I didn't realize when the corporate dream turned into a nightmare. And so I stayed stuck until one, one day when life forced me to get out of my own way. See, it was, a, it was a cold, dark January evening in London, UK, and I sat in the small meeting room of the office building where I worked. This is awful. It is terrible. You and your team are ridiculous. The words came out of a, a senior business leader, and as each word came out, the walls of this small room started to vibrate. My hands were shaking and, and beads of sweat were literally dripping down my face. I remember at one point my mouth opened. Now I couldn't have trusted what would have come out. I looked out to the window of the small room, wondering how an almost 30 year corporate career had come to this. I looked back in the room and a sudden peaceful calm came over me. My hands stopped shaking, my head stopped throbbing. And I remember two very, very quiet words in my head. And those two words were, not today. And I remember I grabbed my stuff, I gathered myself, and I left. Now let me help you understand. I don't mean I left the meeting. I don't mean I left the room. I don't even mean I left the building. I mean that I left that part of my life behind. I left and then I went in search of me, in search of that thing that had been tugging at my heart, that thing that I had disqualified myself from. You see, so often we live in a life and we have dreams, we have visions, we have goals but we disqualify ourselves from being all that we can be. We rule ourselves out. We settle. We tell ourselves that we should be grateful because life is okay. So I'm on a mission now, Denise, to share with women just like me, women who maybe life is on the outside, from the outside, life is okay, but they know deep within them that there's so much more that they can offer the world. 
and they just need a little bit of hand holding to say, I've got you. And if you have a mission, you have a voice, you have a dream, you owe it to not just yourself, but to the world to unleash yourself and give the world the gift of you. That's who I am, Denise. Wow, wow, wow. And you said so many things that I need to unpack here. You were in the corporate world. Yes. And that is already this, what appears to be rigid world. You need to have things done at a certain time in a certain way. And here in this meeting where so many other people were, this guy tried to embarrass you, try to call you out. Okay. Now you didn't, you didn't lash back at him like some of us would have done, right? People out there, you would have, you would have, okay. Anyway, but you held that back and then you left. You were there physically, but you decided in that moment, there's so many people listening today that are sick and tired that they know that this is too much. Whatever it is they're going through, it's enough. It's too much. I can't do it anymore. And they have not left. They have not left mentally or physically. And here, guys, Annie is telling you, she left because she started planning immediately. That sounds like you were planning, sis. So, honestly, I hadn't been planning. Or maybe I had been subconsciously, but not mm. consciously hadn't been planning so you made a really good point there Denise you talked about lashing back I genuinely feel that the the single biggest reason I didn't lash back was because I didn't see this person as an enemy honestly I saw him as 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 one of my guardian angels honestly mm -hmm. I can say that in in honest honest um transparency why yeah. because I'd had these feelings of there's more for you, there's more for you, there's more for you. But I didn't have the courage to do anything about it. Why? Because life was okay. Life on the outside may have even looked like it was good. So I didn't, honestly, I don't know that I would have been on my own if I'd ever had the courage to step out and do something for me. But he made me. He made me do it. And when I left, I got calls from the from the company asking if I wanted to raise a claim against him. I'm like, raise a claim against him? Promote him. He made me do something that I couldn't do by myself. Yes. He was my guardian angel. So, no, I have no regret and no reason to lash out at him. I honestly, if there's anyone who need, needed to be lashed out at, Yeah, I look at that person when I look in the mirror every morning. Yeah. Wow. How did and you become this person? Ah, good, good, great question. How did I become this person? There are three main things I did, Denise. Three main things I did. And I'm not going to suggest to anybody that they were easy. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to suggest to anybody that I am done. I'm still on the journey. I'm, I'm, as long as I'm breathing, I'm on the journey. But the three main things I did was, well, one, I got clarity. Clarity on who I am. Clarity on my mission, my purpose, my assignment in life. Well, see, what I didn't understand then, I thought that a corporate career was my mission in life and was the be all and end all of my life. And whilst I appreciate and celebrate and I am truly grateful for that season of my life I didn't realize that that season had come to an end yes. so I needed clarity to help me see that life is not just to be lived in one lane there's so much that we can be do and have and when you get to the end of one lane please Please explore the many other lanes available to you. Okay. You That's know, right. so many people <laughs> don't recognize when they're at the end of a season. And that is an important point that you made. You know, how do we know we're at the end of our season, of a season? Oh, Denise, I think we know. Mm. I think we know. 
I think deep within us we know. I think we have mm -hmm. yearnings in our heart. I think mm -hmm. we have I think we have things that tug at us from deep within. When you feel I like there's something more? There's something missing. I think uh. we know. I think that we have voices. Voices mm -hmm. tell us. We have nightmares. We wake up. We're not happy. We go to bed tired. We wake up tired. Mm -hmm. We go on vacation to get some rest. We come back even more tired after the vacation. We're not rested within us. I think we know. I think... I hate to say this, but I think we run away from it, Denise. I yes. think we know. I think we know. Let me share the other two things I did. So the first one was yeah. really sit down and spend some time getting clear on who I am and what I want to do next in my life. Uh, three things I did. The second was I invested in a coach. Actually, I lie. I invested in several coaches. Several. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> so I invested in myself. And I also invested in a lot of personal development work. I read a lot of books. I attended a lot of seminars and webinars and trainings and programs. And I really just, all in all, you can encapsulate all that to say I did a lot of self-work. Self-work, work that's. Yes. I have to be honest and say I don't know that I'd actually ever done in my life and work that I don't think a lot of us do. So my invitation actually to, to everyone who's listening to this podcast is to do take time out for self-assessment, self-evaluation, self-rediscovery, and you may just discover the next best version of yourself yes yes so i got spend time getting clear with your vision what is it that you really want invest in coaching and invest in yourself are those the same thing invest in coaching and investing in yourself invest in coaching is one thing invest in personal development is another thing okay personal development so that's Get three Okay, three. so that's three. Yeah, you gave us three things. Okay, guys, write it down because this is how you change your life from life is okay, I better be grateful, even though I want more or I want different, I'm just going to chill because I don't want to upset anything. I don't want to rock the boat. Listen, this is how you get from there to becoming, like any Obi said, the next best version of yourself. And that person is going to shine. When you work on yourself, when you invest in yourself, you become amazing. And when you're amazing, you can't go unnoticed. Mm -mm -mm. Absolutely. Then, Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me, let, me, let me add one thing, Denise, if mm -hmm. I may. Yes. Thank you, which is that no matter what we have achieved, accomplished so far in life, no matter what it is, as long as we're still breathing, as long as we've still got breath in us, then that means that there's more. It yes. means that there's more. And, and we should well, never settle. Never settle. Never now, settle. Any, you, mm. I imagine from the way you've you've spoken so articulately you've addressed this transition i wouldn't say smoothly but it's so charismatic and so how what kind of childhood did you have to create the woman that you are to be able to move from one season of your life to the next and to be the person you are today so charismatically. Well, thank you so much for that um, compliment, Denise. I I don't know that I would have said I've moved three charismatically because there have been many sleepless nights. <laughs> but thank you so much for saying that. Oh, that is that is a joy to my ears. Thank you, Denise. I'm glad it seems that way. So honestly, Denise, I realize now that I had as close to a perfect upbringing as 
as there possibly could be. I, there's obviously not no such thing as perfect, but I had I had two. I was born into a a family of two very loving parents. Um, I was born and raised in Nigeria. My father was Nigerian. My mother was Jamaican. My parents met here in the UK when they were they were both students. They fell in love, got married, and moved back to Nigeria. And I was raised by two parents who were happily married until they passed. My my father passed six years ago at the age of ninety, and my mother passed uh, five years ago at the age of eighty three. So I had my parents until eighty three and ninety, and. When I was younger, honestly, I <laughs> all I saw was what my parents didn't have. All I saw was what they didn't have and what they didn't give me. All I saw was, oh, they're so mean. They keep shouting at me. They're so strict. And oh, oh, my dad, his voice, when he comes home, oh, my God, he's saying to me, you haven't done your homework. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. And it wasn't until I became a woman and had my own children. I really began to appreciate just how much love I was surrounded by when I was younger. Um, my childhood was as idyllic as it could possibly be. Um, and my parents honestly showered us, all their children, with nothing but love. Now, I have an, I have an African father, right? I was raised in Africa. Uh, why do I say this? Um, specifically, let me say Nigeria, because Africa is a massive continent and we're all different people. Nigeria. Nigerians are some of the most ambitious people you're ever likely to meet. So going to school, getting a good education was non-negotiable in my household. There was no plan B. You either went to school and got a good education or you went to school and got a good education. Those were your two options, <laughs> right? <laughs> there was a third option, which is that you were taken to school to get a good education. <laughs> Kicking and screaming if you need to, okay? Well, let's just say school education, non-negotiable. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. Wow, How I'm impressed, I really am, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but as I said, now I realize, and here's the thing though, that's exactly the same way I've raised my own children. Mm -hmm. Both yeah. people get a good education, non-negotiable. It's not, it, they weren't given a choice. They didn't know, they didn't know there was an option. They, my kids yeah. don't know that there's an option because, because they, weren't, they weren't ever allowed to even think that there was an option. Um, wow. Some people don't have this approach. I believe in it. I I was I was I was groomed by it, and I have groomed others by it, and I have no apologies to make for that. Yes, yes, yes. I have grown to see that education is the great equalizer. So it is, you know, I didn't do the same for my children. Where okay, you have to um, get a degree and so on. But I look at life now, and I say, hmm. I encourage them to just, what do you want to do? What is, what is your dream? What is it that you want to do? Focus on that dream and make it happen for you. And yeah. that's beautiful too. But I also have learned that education is easier. And I'm not saying it's easy. It is not easy because I've been there all the way. And so I see though, that it is, it equalizes when you go in a room and people realize that you you are articulate, you are educated, you have sense. They speak to you and and treat you differently. And so I feel like you know that is the great equalizer. So your parents are smart, they're wise in you know enforcing that. Get, go to school, get an education. That's it. No ifs ands about about it. I think I think sometimes we need to understand why people do certain things. It's not it's not just because they want to. I think in the case of parents of my parents' generation, my parents were the first to be given the opportunity to be educated because their parents weren't. And mm -hmm. so they saw 
meditation as a route out of their situation, out of their circumstances. So I think, yes. again, it's something I have appreciated as I have be become a woman myself, that they weren't just being mean. They were actually doing what they felt was the best thing for us, that don't, don't, don't miss this wonderful opportunity that you've been given because some people weren't given it because their parents weren't given it. They were the first, as I say, to get an yeah. education. So for them, yeah. it was a way out of where they had come from. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to see every, every parent's dream is to have their children do better than them. Yes. So they wanted to see their kids do better than them. That was their yeah. dream. So they weren't yeah. being me. They simply were, they were actually trying to help us be better by giving us more options. And yes. that's what education, I believe. It gives us more options. And you pass that wisdom on. Well, for my children, especially um, black boys being raised in the UK, not having an education was not um, optional. I have to say, though, my yeah. kids didn't, I didn't force my kids to have an education. They, they, they simply didn't know that there was an option <laughs> because, they only, <laughs> because they only saw people who had, who had great education, right? So yes. they, they didn't even know that there was a plan B. It's not, it's not as though they were. It was just a way. They, yes. they just didn't know. They honestly didn't know. I think it's yes. only now that they ask me real, real world. They're thinking, oh, okay, so where? We're not the norm, or we're not. No, not they are the norm, but they we're, are but the norm. They're, they're other routes. They're other routes, I should say. Yes, 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 yes. There are so many other routes to success. Yeah, so yes, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of those routes is to become an author. Tell us mm. about your book. Your life is calling. I have so much pride in this book. I have somewhat pride in myself for the work that's went into this book. And I have so much gratitude in my heart, Denise, because this book is what led me to you, is how I found you. And you know how special you are to me. And I can't think of this book without thinking of you and without having so much gratitude in my heart for the life that I am living now, honestly, Denise, because I get comments and feedback and messages from people who have read this book who say to me, your book has transformed my life. And I can honestly say that there's no greater joy, there's no greater satisfaction in life than having somebody tell you how much you've impacted their life. I had one of my coaching clients ask me if she can use my book as the framework for her coaching. That night I went to bed and I cried. I cried tears of sheer gratitude because I didn't know I had it in me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I had it in me. And so the book is about, the book is really written uh, typically for, for my ideal audience, my my ideal audience, that's not to say my only audience, but my ideal audience is a midlife professional woman whose life is okay. But she knows that she doesn't want to get to the end of her life just living in okay. She knows that life is meant to be great. And she knows that there's so much more in her than what she's allowed the world to see. And so this book is saying to her, <laughs> if you know deep within you that there's more for you to do in the world, then now, now is the time because your life is calling. Don't wait to get to the end of your life and then look back and have regrets because Denise, none of us, not one single one of us, is promised a certain number of days on earth. Every day we wake up, we don't know if it'll be our last. Yes. So we need to make today count. Mm -hmm. And it's for that that I wrote this book. Oh man, oh man. Oh, that's right, because your life is calling. 
it could be anyone that is in that position that think, okay, my life is okay, but I want more. I want something different. Yes. And I know that the messages here are impactful. What is one of the lessons? I, I, you, you guys have to give the book, okay? I'm just saying. What, what, what is one of the message that you can impart on this audience that you know, if they just take one, this one thing, it will change their lives. Yeah. Ooh. I would say, honestly, Denise, to answer one question, one question. I'm really hard pushed to narrow it down to one. I'm really hard pushed. They got to get the I book. Y'all got to get the book. <laughs> If I had to, because I was thinking, I was about to say the one that I thought, oh, but there's also that one. No, but if I had to narrow it down to one quest, one, one statement, I think it would be being able to answer the question, who are you? Who are mm. you? Mm. Being able to answer who are you? The reason why I chose who are you is because I think the answer to that question will be the beginning of answering all the other questions yes this is at the core this is at the core who are you and who are you is not who you were yesterday it's not mm -hmm. who you were yesterday it's who are you today and it's who are you without titles mm -hmm. it's who are you without outside of your circumstances mm -hmm. it's who are you outside of your relationships i don't care that you're a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. You were not born a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, a judge, a magistrate, or anything. You were born as simply you. Mm -hmm. You were not born the minute you were born. You were not born into any, you were not born as anybody's wife or mm -hmm. mother or sister. Or you, you may have been somebody's sister, but you had an identity. Who is that person? before the world told you who you were, before life told you who you were, before your circumstances told you who you were, who are you? That's a question to reckon with, guys. That is also a really important question to start with because you are assessing yourself so that you can begin this new season, this new life, and this new journey. So where do you start? You have to look at who do you think you are? Who are you? And then what do you do with this? Okay, so you figured out who you've been saying you are, who you think you are. What's next? What's next, N.A.? What do you want? Mm hmm you hear that, guys? Now, we're giving you, I ain't telling y'all nothing else because you got to get this book, okay? You have to get this book because it's full of gems. It's full of tools. It's filled with so many different stories. Uh, well, not stories, but different ways to get you to become this person that you've been dreaming of or to become the best version of yourself. Because sometimes we're not even dreaming of anything. You, you, you said it when you're manager or supervisor was yelling and acting up and you know trying to really shine the 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 light on himself to say look at me this is how i take care of things knowing he didn't do his best okay and so when he is deflecting you start to think you didn't even know you knew that you've had enough and you wanted something more but you had no idea who you wanted to become. Did you know that you were going to become this international TEDx speaker, this amazing speaker that can command a stage and impact people to change their life? Like, did you know that? I wish I could tell you that I did. I wish I could tell you, Denise, that I did. I had no idea. But what I did know is that what I had been was no longer who I was. Mm -hmm. I know what I was capable of. I'm not mm -hmm. even sure I knew who I was, but I did know who I wasn't 
any longer. Mm -hmm. And I knew that whoever I was going to discover that I was would be so much better than staying in a life that I had outgrown. Let mm -hmm. me just share something. The book does have stories. It does have stories. <laughs> the book has stories. <laughs> Listen, Annie, people have buy the book. You guys got to buy it. No, you got to buy it. <laughs> no, but I want to say, I want to say that I owe it to you um, and, to, and to one of my other coaches for, for helping me see the light in putting stories in the book. The book does have stories. It didn't start out having stories, but it has stories. I'm going to say no more. I'm saying no more. <laughs> get the book. Get Let the me book. tell you. Get the book. Get the book. Because this is the anniversary. When is coming up, right? The anniversary of this book. Oh, what? The 21st of April will be two years. Oh, Denise, there's something we didn't mention. What? Who wrote the forward to the book? Who wrote the forward Ooh! to the book? Who? <laughs> tell the people them. Okay, okay. None other Motivational. than inspirational. None other than the number one. Okay, <laughs> y'all know it. Do I even have to say it? Yeah, are, are you gonna make me say it, people? Mister, you say it. Let you us brown. Oh my goodness, the coveted <laughs> forward was written by none other. Than Mr. Les Brown. Any, what was the process like writing this book and waiting? And you know, how did you get Mr. Les Brown to write your forward? I asked. <laughs> I okay. asked, but I should also say, I should also say total transparency. She was listen, she was a she was a one-to-one -one, client of Mr. Yeah. Les Brown, because he don't just go around giving out forwards, people. Back it up. Okay. <laughs> and she, I said earlier on, I I've invested in myself. Yes. Yes. And it's that, also an investment by this connection. Oh, wait, wait, say it again. The book also has an endorsement by Lisa Nichols. Oh, endorsement. Yes. Yeah. Tell the people them. Yes. And another, that is part of investing in her in yourself. You you mm -hmm. just gotta go out there and make connections by investing in yourself. You can't want free ninety nine, free ninety nine, and still want the same stage that you're seeing people that are paying and investing in themselves. You can't want to be on the same stage. It is not going to happen because what you get for 99 cents and free 99 and 999 is not what you're getting when you invest in a quality coach like Lisa Nichols and Mr. Les Brown. It's not. I don't think you could have said that any better, Denise. There's, I have nothing more to add to that statement. Thank you. <laughs> nothing. Period. <laughs> period. Exactly. Period. <laughs> period. Yeah. Where can this audience find your book? Because everybody's okay. going out there now. Okay. Great, great question. Thank you. For mm -hmm. for people in the UK, they can buy it off my website and get a signed copy. Uh, for everybody else, but also for people in the UK, if they don't want a signed copy, they can get it on Amazon. It's on Amazon. You so, heard it here. Get your book on Amazon, or you can get a signed copy by going to her website. That's What's it. your website? Uh, Ziano. So we we say Z I A N O. You say Z. <laughs> <laughs> you say Z Z I A N O dot C O dot U K. Z I A N O dot C O dot U K. I love that we live in this global community and everyone's accent, everyone's culture. I just love it. And it's um, uh, celebrated and we need each other, you know? So Absolutely. yeah, we say Z, but you say Z and I love it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, before you go, before we come to an end, I have three questions that I ask every guest. And number one is, what is a bold promise that you can share with the world that you know that this can change their lives? This is a bold promise. A bold promise that you can 
it's share not with even your audience bold. to change your life. Mm -hmm. It's not bold? Bold. It's just fact. Okay. Let's hear it. Consistency. Ooh. will change your life. Okay. It's just fact, Denise. The rule of 100. If you want something. Mm -hmm. the rule, yeah, that's it. If you want something and you step and do it consistently, the... The word, the operative word is consistently. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's 1% per day. I don't care if it's 1% per week. But 1% consistently and cumulatively, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yes. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard where it will get you. Consistency. Yes. Guys, write this down, okay? All right. You're getting gems. You're getting real tools here. So pay attention, write it down. Now, if you're driving, just listen to this podcast again, because this is the type of information that can change your life if you are consistent. Okay, write it down. Now, what is a bold statement that you can share with your audience or this audience that you know will cause a paradigm shift and also help to sh shift their life. Okay. This one is just as simple. Just as simple. Every morning, when you get up, go to your bathroom mirror, look in the mirror, smile, and say, I am grateful to see another day Say your name and say, I love you. I love that one. I love that one. So get up in the mornings, look yourself in the mirror and say something positive affirmation and say, I, I love grateful. you. I am I'm grateful. grateful. Mm -hmm. Another day. Say your name. Mm -hmm. I love you. Oh, Every I'm writing that down. I am grateful for another day. Say my name. I'm grateful Denise. for Denise. Denise. I am grateful. I love, mm -hmm. I love you. Oh, I don't think I've told me that I love me in a long time. Don't do it, Denise. We don't do yeah. it, Denise. And that will cause a paradigm shift. Yeah, that's really a good one, Eni. I don't remember... When was the last time I tell this girl I love her? Okay, so I'm going to do that today. After this, I'm going to tell this girl. I love you, Denise. Mm -hmm. I love you. Okay, what is a bold move that you'd like to make in the future? Oh, ow. I have dreams, Denise. I have dreams. I, I, love, I have dreams. I would love to host global events on every continent in the world sold out global events for women whether it's a seminar whether it's a retreat whether it's a conference or a gathering where women come and learn just how much value how much power how much they have to offer the world, where we mm -hmm. can come and learn, believe in ourselves, tell each other, tell ourselves how much we love each other. Yes. Gather some tools that we can share, learn and then share and take it back to our homes and help others transform their lives. That sounds like a prediction. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a prediction. And I know, because I know you, I know you, I know that you're speaking this today and it's already happened, sis. It has already happened. Wow. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much, Eni, for sharing so many great points. I am going to revisit um, some of the most important things that you've said so many great things, but I want people to remember these three things, spend time getting clear on what it is that you want. That's what NAOB said. Okay. 
invest in coaching people. Did you hear how many coaches she invested in? And that's not even the tip of the iceberg because I know how many people use. I know. I don't even think I know all of them, but I know at least a dozen. And then <laughs> number three, self-development. Work on yourself. Get smarter. Get stronger. Get better. Stop complaining and work on yourself because things will change when you change. Those were some really great tips. And I hope that you guys take what you've learned here today and apply it to your life because it doesn't make sense that we take notes and yeah. forget about it. Apply it to your life now. Mm -hmm. And one year from now, you'll see that either you're on the path to becoming that person that you want to become or you're there. So these are very important tips that we're giving you to make sure that if when you put these things in your life, that you're going to be a different person one day soon. N.A., thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing today's podcast with me. You have an amazing book that has changed my life. So many other women around me, I've learned to walk up in a room and be bold. I've learned to walk in a room and command what I want from this woman and from this book. And I know that it has impacted my life in such a positive way that if you get this book or when you get this book, because I know y'all gonna run and get it because you want the gems, you want the change. I know that it's going to make a big difference in your life equally as much as it made in my life. And I'm not just saying that because N.A. is one of my best friends. She is one of my best friends. But before we were best friends, we were working together on this book. And I was taking notes, okay? When this book was finished, I read the book and I was like, this is who you are. This is who you are, N.A. This is who this woman is. So you are getting a piece of the diamond when you purchase this book. And there's so many other ways to work with any, any. How can these people work with you? You get the book, but what if, you know, we want to work deeper. How do we do that? Yeah, thank you, Denise. Uh, on my website, there is a link uh, for where people can schedule a call with me. They can send me, they can slide into my DM, as you say. I am on basically all social media platforms specifically uh, most most uh prevalent most prevalent on uh, uh what's it called instagram and facebook uh -huh. so you can slide into my dm you can go to my website and send me an email um you can reach out to dr denise she knows where to find me i am not hard to find if, if you want to find me you will find me yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. thank you my friend i absolutely just i'm so proud of you so very proud of you because I know where you started and I see you today and you're soaring and you're amazing and everyone's taking note. And it just makes me so proud to be on the inside of that. Okay. Because I know you. <laughs> ringside, ringside seat, ringside seat. Let, let me ringside say before we go. Seat, yes. Yeah. Let me say before we go how proud mm -hmm. I am of you. First of all, thank you for having me on your podcast. Uh, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your uh, guidance. Thank you for your companionship. Thank you for your ear. Just thank you for being you. You're somebody, you are a trusted um, a trusted guide, a trusted friend, a trusted mentor, and I don't take it for granted. So I want to thank you as well, not just for what you do to me, but what I know that you do to just about everybody who crosses your path. You have a really great soul, and and my 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 wish is that you would recognize just how much value you have. Thank you, Ooh. Denise. Oh my God, love you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen you. guys, if you would like to write your book, if you have a message, if you know that you've had some experience that can change someone else's life, 
email me at authordnicholson at gmail.com. Let's get your book out there. Okay, this year. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for the Bold Book of the Day with Dr. Denise Nicholson, a central hub and a safe space for authors to share their stories. Follow Dr. Denise on Facebook and Instagram at Denise Nicholson or go to denisenicholson.com. Remember, no one can share your story better than you.